Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're going to be taking a look at something which is the uh, the pain in the backside for a lot of PC builders, myself included, and that is your case front panel I.O. and where does it plug in on the motherboard? Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at front Panel I.O., which is not the most exciting of things, but it's something which a lot of people get wrong, myself included. I've actually managed to damage USB 3.0 ports before, and yeah, basically I've made mistakes or I've not plugged things in properly, so I wondered why my audio isn't working. All those kinds of things, and hopefully in today's video we'll go through, clarify a few things, and uh, demystify some of the pins, and go through, and hopefully after watching this you should be uh, considerably more confident in actually setting up your PC build for the first time. Maybe you're a novice, maybe you've done this a thousand times, there's always something you can learn. So, starting off, I've got two versions of front panel I.O. So I've got the very old and traditional style. So this is from cases which are probably a good 10 years old by now, but the USB 2 headers on here and also the connections on the back are the same on modern cases, so I wanted to include that. And also we've got a much more modern panel. Now obviously I've taken these out of the cases for simplicity because you don't want a huge case rattling around. Hopefully this will give you a better idea. So this is a much more modern example. So on this particular one, we've got our push buttons at the front there for power and also reset. There's a couple of LEDs in there as well. We've got our USB 3.0 ports, headphone and mic jacks, and another USB 3. And on the end, we've got a type C port. So we should cover all the bases in today's video. So I want to start off with what connector goes with which port. So let's start off with the front panel. So the power button, the reset button, and your LEDs are generally all going to be grouped up into one cable. Now this is the one which is the biggest pain in the backside of the entire PC build. So this is your front panel IO main connector. Now these are actually pinned in a specific way. Some of them actually do need to be put in with the correct polarity. So the ones for the actual LEDs themselves, so the power LED and the hard drive LED, do need to have the correct polarity or the LEDs will not light up. It isn't going to cause you any problems, but it won't light up, so potentially that is an issue. When it comes to the actual power button and the reset switch, these are simple toggle on-off switches, so or one-touch switches, so when you press it, it basically bridges the connection. So it doesn't matter which way you put them around, although obviously if you can do it, observing the polarity is helpful and essentially a little bit tidier. Next up, we've got our USB 3.0. Now this one's actually got two ports on, so there is going to be two wires going into our connection. So this connection, again, this is one which is a little bit of a pain because the pins are quite small. And if you look very closely, you'll notice that the connector is actually keyed. And when I say keyed, I mean there is only one way it will go in. So there's a little plastic notch on the top section and also on some, if you look very closely at the pins, you potentially might see that one of them is blanked out, or blocked off, so it can physically only fit in one way. This particular one uh, doesn't seem to have that. Well, actually, yes, it does. And actually, before we go any further, something which might be very helpful to you and I would strongly suggest getting into your kit is a magnifying glass. Now these are excellent, this is an illuminated one from Rolson, so it's got some LEDs in there. This is going to be really handy if you're possibly a little bit visually impaired or just uh, getting older, as we all tend to do. This is going to be great, so you can take a very good close-up of the pins and the connections and make sure everything is okay. And actually even look for blockages, so if you've got your cables and they seem like they're in the right way and they're keyed correctly, but they physically still won't fit, always worth getting the magnifying glass out and just examining the pins a little bit closer. So anyway, that is the USB 3.0 one. Uh, in the middle of those two, we've got the audio jacks. So this is for headphones and microphones. On some cases, you're gonna get a combo one, but effectively, it's still gonna terminate into the same connector, which is one of these. Not to be confused with the USB 2.0 connector, which is the same size, but has different pinouts. Again, these are generally keyed. So you're gonna find that one of the pins towards the top or bottom, depending on which way you're looking at it, is gonna be blocked off and it it's kind of in a little bit as well. Whereas the USB ones, as we'll see shortly, the blocked off pin is kind of on one corner. So that is the audio connection. That one, generally pretty easy to do. Very little you can go wrong with that due to the fact of how well it is keyed. 
And the last one, which is going to be one which is going to be a little bit demystifying for me as well, actually. Uh, part of the reason why I actually made this video, the USB Type-C connection. And this is the one which really gets me because USB Type-C is designed so that when you actually plug in a USB Type-C device, it doesn't matter which way round it goes because the connection is symmetrical. So either way works absolutely fine. Unfortunately, where things go a little bit wrong is actually the motherboard end of it. So where you actually plug this into your motherboard, this connection does look like it is actually symmetrical, but on closer inspection, which hopefully you're seeing for some B-roll, it is slightly offset. And also there is something which makes things a little bit easier, at least it should do on most panels. There is actually a little triangle in one corner. So this is for pin number one. It's very difficult to see on a lot of things. So do be very uh, careful and cautious. And again, the uh, magnifying glass may come in handy here, but essentially there is a little pin there or an arrow or should be some indentation showing you where pin number one is. Now actually on the motherboard itself, there is basically very little markings on there at all. There is a very, very small triangle, which hopefully I've captured and you should be able to see on the screen right now. But that is basically the only way that it will physically fit in and actually work. Some people have managed to force it in going in the wrong way, but again, obviously it won't work because the pinouts are gonna be completely different. So that is the, uh, the modern style and the older style. Again, going back to the USB 2.0, the HD audio, as you can see, the pin which is missing is kind of in a little bit, whereas the USB 2.0, the blocked off pin is actually on the outer edge. So hopefully that all makes sense. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna get some close-ups of the camera and we're gonna actually physically connect these onto our motherboard so you can see how it's done. So here is the first one. So this is the main front panel connection. So this is for reset, power switch, etc. Hopefully in the uh, top left of your screen or wherever I can fit it on, you'll now see the actual pinouts from this particular motherboard. Pretty much all motherboards are the same for this main block of eight connectors here on the left hand side. Some boards such as Asus and Gigabyte additionally will have additional connections here. Some MSI boards will have these extra ones actually somewhere else. These generally tend to be for older style power LEDs, the three pin ones rather than the two pin ones, which are more common these days. And the top one being for your PC speaker. Sometimes as well, in the middle there, right dead center, there is what is known as the CI connection. That is the chassis intrusion, which basically nobody uses these days, but there it is anyway. So with this, this is the trickiest one to do, and it's gonna be very hard for me to show, but I'm gonna try and do my best. So the pins start with the positives on the left-hand side as you're looking down at it. So it's gonna be positive, negative, positive, negative, then at the bottom layer, positive, negative, positive, negative. You can actually see there is actually silk screened or printed on there what the actual things are. Again, you may want to use your magnifying glass to clarify that or refer back to your user manual. So I'm going to start off with the top row. So the top row is power LED plus and minus, and then we've got the power switch. Then underneath that on the bottom row, we've got the hard drive LED plus and minus, and then next to that we have the reset switch. Again, as I said earlier, the LEDs do need to be polarity correct. So in order to do that, if you look at your actual pinouts, so let's look at for power LED, that's normally split into two. So hopefully you just might make that out. Hopefully it's somewhat in focus. So power LED minus, so the other one is gonna be power LED plus. If I spin that around, try and get you a decent shot. There we go, power LED plus. So they should be marked up. So power LED plus is gonna be the first one we wanna use. And if you want to, with these cables, you can actually split them up a little bit more just to give you a little bit more working room. Might make it a little bit more untidy, but certainly makes it a little bit easier if you are uh, slightly limited on dexterity. So we're gonna do the power LED plus first of all. So that goes on this end pin just here. And then the power LED minus goes right next to it. So there we go, got a little bit of extra light on there. So you can see, make sure you haven't got any spare pins on the outside, that is absolutely fine. So power LED plus, power LED minus. Next to that along the top row, we've got the power switch. So just check the labels on your cable, and there we go, power switch. Again, 
This doesn't necessarily have to be the right way round, but if you can get into the habit of trying to get the, uh, the writing all in the same direction, that might be beneficial. So the next ones at the bottom are going to be your uh, hard drive LED, plus and minus. So again, check, uh, luckily, first one to come to. So hard drive LED, plus and minus, you can see quite clearly there. If you're not too sure, generally it's going to be that the writing is going to be actually facing you. So obviously, plus and minus that way is going to be correct. If we turn it around 180, it's going to be incorrect. So with the writing all facing in the same direction, should be fine. So we're going to go ahead and plug that one in. And that's gone in fine. That leaves us just one connection left here at the bottom, which is going to be our reset switch. So we can go ahead and plug that in. And that is essentially it for this section. If you want to, again, just get your uh, magnifying glass and make sure everything is in. That one doesn't look like it's in quite all the way. And there we go. So that is the front panel I.O. That is all done. We can, we can ignore the ones on the side there. That is for chassis intrusion, as we said. The old-fashioned power LED. Actually, let me show you that. So if I disconnect the, uh, the power LED from the back there, and the two pins. So the old school versions would have been with a gap in the middle. So if we plug those in there. So that will actually work. So we've got the pins in. So hopefully you can see that. So power LED there, then a space in the middle, and then power LED minus. So you can choose to do it in either way. If for some reason it suits your cabling, then you can do it that way. It will work on either side but normally you'd put it into the top corner. So that's the uh, IO section done. Let's move on to the next connector on our list, which is gonna be the USB Type-C. So with the USB Type-C, you will find there is a very, very small triangle in one corner. Now, if you're not too sure which one it is, you'll notice they are slightly uh, offset as well. So that is generally gonna be pin number one, where you've got this very, very small triangle, whereas on the other side, it's basically flat. Hopefully, again, I'll get you some close-ups that or some exploded diagrams so you can see what that's about. So that is pin number one, where the triangle is. And if you look actually on the connector itself, so on this side of the cable, nothing at all. You spin it around, you can just about see there is a small triangle there. So this says this is pin number one. So pin number one matches up with pin number one there. So if we take our USB Type-C connection, and there we go, that should just clip into place. Now if we take it out, a little wiggle, and try and put it in the other way, it kind of wants to go a little bit, but it won't, so I'm not gonna force it because I don't wanna damage it because these are expensive. But there you go, so pin number one, pin number one, the little triangle is there, and you should find a little bit of wiggle and that will fit in absolutely perfectly. So there is USB Type-C. Now the next one is a little bit more tricky for some people, and I would suggest with this one, take more time and attention. You'll notice with the USB 3.2 or 3.0 front panel header, that the actual pins, because they're quite dense, they're actually a lot smaller and a lot thinner than the USB Type-2 or your front panel IO, which means they have a more, well, more of a tendency to bend so if you don't go in with the actual connector dead on straight, then potentially you can damage the pins, which I have actually done when rushing. Now, these are keyed. So there is a small section, which is taken out of the top there. And also there is a missing pin over on the left-hand side of this connector. So again, like I said earlier, if you take a look at your connector, you may find that there's a blocked off pin, which, Yep, this one has got, as you can just about see there, hopefully it's slightly in focus. And there is also the notch at the top. So the notch at the top matches up with the missing part there. So what you want to do is to try and get this as flat and as accurate as possible. And you should find with a very little wiggle, there you go, it just snaps into place with very little force. You shouldn't need a great deal of force. If you need a lot of force, then potentially you're bending a pin, in which case my suggestion would be to wiggle the connector a little bit until it pops all the way out. Sometimes it'll take the plastic with it. 
There we go. That is a little bit more difficult to actually remove than it is to put in. So yeah, if you're not too sure, double check again. Again, your magnifying glass is gonna be your friend here. Use your magnifying glass and just make sure all the pins are straight. If they're not straight, you can use something very delicate, a little bit of plastic or something to actually slightly move them if you need to. If you're concerned about it and it's a brand new board and it's slightly bent out of the factory, I would just return it. Again, down to the individual. But essentially that is it. There is actually those little lugs there, which are what locks into position. Got those on both sides and you've got the pin again. So. Yeah, that just goes in. If for some reason when you pull this out, you pull out the plastic bit, you can actually replace that and push it back in. It is a little bit delicate, but it can be done. So there we go. That is the USB 3.0 front panel connection. So the next one is going to be very straightforward, very simple. So these are our USB 2.0 headers. Now these are nine pin. There is a pin missing in the top corner. As we said a little bit earlier, you should find that the, uh, the matching connector nine pins again with one section just blanked off there as you can just about see so literally there's only one way this can physically go in the pins themselves are a little bit more substantial as well so less likely for bending although don't rule it out entirely some motherboards don't have these plastic surrounds so do be careful that you actually line them up correctly otherwise you can kind of offset them by one in which case they're not going to work properly this gigabyte board's got the uh, plastic surrounds which makes life a lot easier so there's our blanked off pin, there's our blanked off pin, literally just get it lined up, a little wiggle and it should seat down in nicely. Now you can use either one of those depending on what you want to do, uh, most boards have got at least two of these these days, so it's absolutely fine. Now with TPM, not many people use it, but TPM basically works in the same way or is kind of like a hybrid between the USB 3.0 and also the front panel audio. So again, it's got the smaller pins, but there is one missing kind of slightly inset there, not in a corner. So if you've got a TPM connection, uh, that's pretty straightforward to do. Again, just be careful. That is it for USB 2. So let's go to front panel audio. So here is front panel audio. This one again is going to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to use the old school connection on this one just because it's handy. So again, we've got nine pins there. And there is one missing which is uh, slightly inset. And if we look at the connection, you can see again, we've got nine pins there with one blanked off, which is uh, again, slightly inset. So it's just a matter of matching up the inset pin with the header. And again, much like USB 2.0, just put it in and a little wiggle and it should fit in very nicely. It's almost impossible to get this wrong because if you try and put it in around the other way, the blocked off pin basically stops it even seating into the surround. Assuming you've got a surround. If you haven't got a surround, then if you put force, you will bend the pins. So do be careful of that. But essentially, that is pretty much it for how to wire up your front panel connectors. So there you go. There is how to connect up your front panel IO on your desktop PC motherboard. Again, this is gonna be pretty much universal across almost all motherboards. The ones which may not kind of adhere to the same standards are gonna be some of the custom builds, such as Dells and things like that where you may find them slightly different than certain HP models. Although it is starting to be where most manufacturers are kind of adhering to the same pinouts just for simplicity's sake. But hopefully, yeah, that's uh, clarified some things. For me personally as well, the USB Type-C, it's a relatively new thing. Not all motherboards and not all cases have it. So actually working out what the actual kind of the key is on this and which way around it goes was actually beneficial to me as well. So I've learned something, even if you haven't, but hopefully you have, and if you have, don't forget to leave a like on the video. Again, other things you might want to do, pick up one of these. I'll put a link for this in the video description. This is super handy. A magnifying glass. If you're building PCs, doing any of this with the small pins, or you're just trying to find out where something is on a motherboard, super handy, not very expensive, well worth having in your toolkit. So I'll link that in the video description below. I think that's going to wrap things up. Obviously, if you've got any comments or questions, you know what to do. Leave them in the comments section below. If you need a quick answer or anything, head over to our Discord. Uh, it's open 24-7. I'm not going to be there 24-7, but there will be other people, so potentially you can get some help there. Or if you wait, I will try and answer your questions as soon as I possibly can. But yeah, that's going to wrap things up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.